Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The former WBO champion Joseph Parker could return to the ring as early as August in New Zealand, according to his advisor and manager David Higgins, who's been speaking to New Zealand media to stuff.co.nz, telling the publication that it could be in front of a limited crowd. So when we move into the next uh, alert level for this pandemic, which would be alert level two, there will be a restriction in place for no mass gathering. So events over 100 people will be banned and will not be allowed to take place so Higgins is looking at a potential event potentially in August that could be for Joseph Parker versus you know TBA but it would be in front of 100 people and that would include the 100 person limit the people involved in the events the boxing teams the officials broadcasters caterers and the publication suggests that the actual crowd for the fight the people the paying public could be about 60 people and if you think about it in that context, that's a really intimate sort of event. And I'll get to David Higgins's uh, comments and then on to a few thoughts, because I look at this event in a couple of ways that it would be good if there's a sort of fight that can happen. But with it being such a small event, is it actually financially viable for those involved? And not so much um, Higgins, because he doesn't promote Parker. It's Matchroom. They would be the ones looking to put the show on. And DAZN, where Parker fights on, are they just going to want to throw a bundle of money with no guaranteed return here? It's a question, and I'll come to that soon. But talking of a potential intimate event, 100 or less people, which includes the fighters, teams, and everyone else, including a smaller audience, Higgins stated, it could be at a grand lawn or the lobby of an ornate building. Something unique. But the international TV audience would be huge. These are unprecedented times that have turned the industry upside down. You have a choice of sitting idle and riding it out, or you think laterally at something that still works. Safety is the most important thing, and we would certainly respect the conditions in place. Matchroom see it as a real possibility, with New Zealand appearing ahead of the curve in the battle against COVID-19. So those were statements from David Higgins, the advisor and manager for Joseph Parker. So the idea of this event, it is a good one. I think, you know, they're going to have to make the best of a bad situation and the opponent stuff I'll come to a bit later. But the context around the pandemic, that's obviously prohibiting anything bigger. Originally, the sort of talk, even during, you know, sort of March and early April from Higgins was giving it the big one about a big event, New Zealand coming out of COVID-19, maybe the first ahead of the curve, yada, yada, yada. The reality is New Zealand, having been very cautious, will continue to be cautious and that that's already been signaled in restrictions that we're yet to enter into the sort of as we go down the alert levels. So the 100 person limit for an event, that's probably not going to be changing anytime soon. So they're looking to make the best of a bad situation. But one of the, the things that I sort of look at immediately with this is, you know, if this is going to be a matchroom event, which is going to be shown on the zone, for example, what does this actually mean in terms of the finances, the viability? Because that's been talked about to some degree with this fight. They've laughed at Junior Farr's team for saying, hey, we want a million dollars to fight Joseph Parker. And Higgins has sort of said that Joseph Parker would be willing to fight for about half of that, about half a million dollars. When you think about how expensive it is to put on these events, and in the context of a fight in New Zealand, the live gate has always been a massive part of events, especially Joseph Parker events. He gets decent crowds, and the live gate is the sort of cream on the top. You know, it does make a bit of money to help, you know, fund the event and that sort of thing, you know, help add to the profit. So you're cutting that out here. What is the actual sort of return on the investment here for Matchroom and DAZN? So they're talking about, you know, launching DAZN worldwide. New Zealand was going to be one of these countries. And they were looking to do that ahead of the pandemic. It would have been sort of uh, done uh, in sync with uh, Canelo's Cinco de Mayo fight, which you would have had on what made the 5th just, you know, earlier this week. But in terms of the new situation, I think we just have to consider the context of DAZN right now. They're not in a good place. They're not just going to be dumping money into, you know, 
fights around the world that there is no you know potential return on investment they want to make money they want things to really take off for them they can't afford to just be you know spending and fritting frittering money away right now they have stopped paying for sports rights they have uh, furloughed staff they've been losing subscribers it's not a great position to be in right now and especially uh, with in america uh, people who have locked into the year-long disown deal they're not getting refunds right now or anything like that but also disown don't really have any content so people who've been paying monthly have obviously been trying to cancel and get out of it because what would they be paying for at the moment so when boxing comes back and when disown can start getting the ball rolling again they're going to want some slam dunks to actually get some you know money turning over and sure people might point to while well, they were spending into the market previously but the conditions you know in the market has changed the zone is actually in a you know a much worse position financially they're not just going to be dumping untold amounts of money into some sort of crowdless event in new zealand featuring joseph parker who's already going to get paid a whole bunch of money to fight they want to know that they're going to either get the subscribers, the paying customers that they can help keep. And remembering a DAZN offering in New Zealand, we don't even know what it looks like yet. And sure, Joseph Parker might be part of trying to get people subscribed, but what other content are they going to have? A lot of people might sign up for one month or one fight, that being the Parker fight. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up having a DAZN pay-per-view in New Zealand if this is in fact on DAZN it wouldn't shock me at all because ultimately they'll be after making money at this point and there's no guarantee they're going to get mass people subscribing for any length of time just off the basis of one Parker fight given that he fights what once a year at the moment he's had multiple tune-ups in a row so I'm not convinced that they're going to you know get mass subscribers and whatever numbers do come on board how can they retain them if they have no other content to keep them you know on an ongoing basis one night of boxing isn't probably going to get someone to you know stay on the zone for a sustained period of time with no other content you know potentially for some time and there's no content library of the sports rights to speak of especially in the new zealand context with the zone probably this uh, very similar for other countries that are coming onto this expansion like australia for example so it'll be interesting to see the commitment from DAZN because I'm sure Eddie Hearn as a promoter, he will give it the big one. He will talk in public a very sort of big game. But behind the scenes, the numbers will matter. And I think one of the forgotten things about this whole pandemic and the impact on sport is the broadcasters. They're hurting as well big time and sure everyone wants to have some sport back but they're not going to be just you know pouring untold amounts of money into something if they don't know what the actual outcome is going to be they're not just going to waste money in the attempt to get a few thousand subscribers that might drop off almost immediately if you see what i mean in the context of um, david higgins he has uh, some skin in the game here too not just joseph parker but his management company so the story further down it it notes here higgins is investigating the financial package but having had to lay off staff he feels an obligation to try to do something to get his business back up and running but it was equally important to keep Parker active as the 28-year-old former WBO champion enters his prime years for fighting. To me, that suggests that his business, which is Duco Events, they put on uh, events and such, event management company, that they're not necessarily in a great way at the moment. And maybe some of the talk more recently from Higgins is actually they need to get contracted for a decent event like this just to have some cash flow through the door. So maybe Higgins isn't all just thinking about Parker here. It's also thinking about his company, the uh, jobs, you know, and the people that are involved there too. So I can't blame him for that, but is august realistic we just don't know but also is the zone looking to launch in august in new zealand is it going to be better to have done it in september or after canelo's next fight i don't know it's hard to say they were originally looking to have canelo alvarez as uh, his may cinco de mayo weekend fight as the sort of uh, launch pad for the zone around the world but i guess everything is up in the air all plans have been sort of um you know scratched at this point and maybe august is possible for a hundred person event but what do you make of this and what would you make of the opponent they're talking about lucas brown potentially junior far and dempsey mckean those are names that have been mentioned in recent weeks obviously 
Uh, this talk of Junior Farr has cooled because of the demands that his team is asking for. They want at least whatever one third of Parker's fight would be. But if that was to fall, say if Parker gets 500,000 and that ends up being 160 grand for Farr, it sounds like they would want more than that for the risk level of the fight. Lucas Brown, Dempsey McKean, um, Brown, he's completely shot. I wouldn't be interested in that fight, but I'd watch it. That's the thing. I'd, Lucas Brown is rinsed as anything right now, but it might be hard to get a fight made with him because he would probably want retirement level money too. And Dempsey McKean, a, a prospect on the rise, he's probably, like Junior Far, not really there or ready for that fight right yet. Needs a bit more meat on the resume. And the overall interest in the fight, any of these fights... I mean, it's hard to say, because on one hand, you have people who haven't had sport for months, but also do they want to have some bloated $50, $60 pay-per-view, you know, Joseph Parker would in a, effectively another tune-up, you know, maybe a bit more than a tune-up, but not much more. You know, there's a question there, because arguably Parker doesn't need any of those fights. You can make an argument for that. He could just wait this out and go into a bigger and better fight at some point. Sure, you can talk about activity, but at the risk of having what would be potentially perceived to be a fourth tune-up in a row, might not be a great look. You know, you don't want to start getting the new, uh, the nickname Tune Up Joe or something like that. But drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.